نبتدي ذا فورث سيشن ومرة تانية congratulations دكتورة هادية congratulations يعني the day is very successful وواضح جدا إن كل lectures very well selected بشكل جميل إن عملت stimulation للفلور و it came up with يعني very fruitful discussion هنبتدي أول presentation هو he is a lucky guy وكسب جائزة النهاردة دكتور محمد أبو النجا is going to talk about mechanical thrombolysis in a case of extensive iliofemoral DVT. تفضل دكتور محمد. Thank you دكتور أسيلا. هو بس عشان الشفافية والله يا جماعة هو الشركة قالت لي إنه الدكتور أحمد نجا اللي اسمه كان مكتوب هو اتكتب بالخطأ محمد أبو النجا تاني فهو كان الدكتور أحمد نجا. تمام عشان الشفافية بس في الموضوع. Pharmacomechanical thrombolysis in DVT. Pathophysiology of DVT. All of us know about the pathophysiology, which is known as Verkaus triad, venous stasis and blood coagulopathy or increased viscosity, endothelial vein damage. All factor responsible for balanced thrombolysis. Uh, physiologic clot formation is balanced by controlled thrombolysis to prevent pathologic intravascular thrombosis. Plasmin is a central fibrinolytic enzyme generated by proteolytic cleavage of proenzyme plasminogen. Activation of uh, plasminogen occurs uh, by several mechanisms uh, by tissue plasminogen activator, by urinary plasminogen activator, and activated protein C. This result in degradation of fibrin polymer by plasmin to fragment E and two molecules of fragment D, which is a D dimer, an accurate predictor of ongoing risk for recurrent venous thromboembolism. The risk factor for DVT increasing age, major, uh, major surgery, trauma, malignant disease, neurologic disease with extremity paresis, central venous castor or transvenous uh, pacemaker, thrombophilia, prior superficial venous uh, thrombosis and varicose vein, hospital or nursing home uh, confinement. Uh, among women, additional risk factors include pregnancy and oral contraceptive vel, uh, pills and uh, hormonal replacement therapy. Uh, the age, uh, among all risk factors, the age is an important because venous disease, including venous thromboembolism, are usually regarded as a rare in young children, with incidence of 0.006 uh, per 1,000 children younger than 14 years old. Venous thrombopolism in children is almost always associated with a recognized thrombotic risk factor, and the multiple risk factors are often required to precipitate thrombosis. The precise number of people affected by deep venous thrombosis or pulmonary embolism is unknown. About 900,000 of people could be affected each year in the United States. Sudden death is the first symptom in about one quarter of people who uh, have pulmonary embolism. Post-thrombotic syndrome is the most frequent complication of DVT. After proximal DVT, about 20 to 50 percent of patients will develop post-thrombotic syndrome. And this uh, diagram showing uh, the, that the risk of acute leg complication and risk of uh, uh, post-thrombotic syndrome is higher with proximal iliofemoral deep venous thrombosis and decrease with going distal to calf vein DVT. To diagnose DVT clinically with pain, swelling, color changes, and radiologically with duplex ultrasound, and uh, the, some uh, some uh, patient presented with pulmonary embolism as the first presentation. Sometimes uh, uh, duplex ultrasound may be not conclusive, or the patient, uh, yani, uh, not diagnosed as the first days with uh, duplex ultrasound. Uh, but the patient have a D-dimer elevated, uh, so we should uh, repeat the duplex ultrasound after uh, one week uh, to uh, confirm the diagnosis or uh, confirm that the patient have no DVT. One of these factors is uh, the D-dimer, which may be elevated in other conditions like trauma and recent surgery, uh, hemorrhage, cancer, sepsis. Uh, so it is a low specificity for DVT, therefore it should be used to roll out DVT, not to confirm the diagnosis. Treatment of DVT, the primary uh, objective for treatment of, D of uh, DVT is to uh, prevent further clot extension and prevention of acute pulmonary embolism and prevention of late complication uh, like post thrombotic syndrome. 
the main three lines for treatment uh, are uh, medical and compression therapy and intervention. Medically, as uh, we know, oral anticoagulant and parenteral, oral uh, like old warfarin and uh, duax, uh, uh, and parenteral like unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight. But despite the use of anticoagulation and support stocking, about 25 to 47% of DVT patients will develop post thrombotic syndrome within two years. So, uh, intervention uh, with uh, castor directed thrombolysis or mechanical thrombectomy, pharmacomechanical thrombectomy or thrombolysis, uh, angioplasty, and or stenting, the selection of which type to be used is individualized. Uh, when an invasive procedure is considered, the benefit must be weighted against the added risk compared with the standard anticoagulation therapy. So, if it is to be performed, the intervention must improve the result of the current medical therapy. The rationale from endovascular is reducing the severity and the duration of lower extremity symptoms and the reduction of pulmonary embolism, dimensioning the risk of uh, recurrent venous thrombosis and reduction of post thrombotic syndrome. The advantages of thrombolytic versus the conventional anticoagulation is rapid resolution of symptoms and reduction of pulmonary embolism, restoration of normal venous circulation and preservation of venous valvular function and reduction of post thrombotic syndrome. As the European Society of Vascular Surgery recommends in selected patients with symptomatic iliofemoral deep venous thrombosis, early thrombus removal strategies should be considered. But the disadvantage of thrombolytic versus conventional anticoagulation is that thrombolytic therapy doesn't prevent clot propagation, re thrombosis, and subsequent embolization, and heparin therapy and oral anticoagulant therapy must always follow the course of thrombolysis. As the European Society of Vascular Surgery recommend for patients with deep venous thrombosis treated with early thrombus removal with or without stenting, it is recommended that the duration of anticoagulation should be at least as long as if the patient were treated by anticoagulation alone. Another meta-analysis compared between castor-directed thrombolysis and pharmacomechanical thrombolysis uh, a meta-analysis demonstrates that uh, the group of pharmacomechanical thrombolysis result in low severity of post-thrombotic com uh, syndrome compared to the other group. And the average duration of hospital stay and the uh, at the thrombolysis time uh, shorter in pharmacomechanical group compared to the other group. Another research uh, measured the long-term the long uh, clinical outcome and the quality of life between the two groups of pharmacomechanical and the castor-directed thrombolysis and the result was neither pharmacomechanical thrombolysis nor catheter-directed thrombolysis significantly affected the incidence of post-thrombotic syndrome at five years in patients with acute iliofemoral DVT. However, pharmacomechanical thrombolysis significantly reduced the post-thrombotic severity score. An uh, indication for uh, thrombolysis at American Colleague of Chest Physician and American Heart Association in phlegmasia and symptomatic inferior vena cava thrombosis uh, that respond poorly to anticoagulant alone, symptomatic iliofemoral and femoropopletial deep venous thrombosis, and uh, reduction of the high risk of post thrombotic syndrome. The success rate of castor directed thrombolysis varies depending on the age of the thrombus and the proximity to inferior vena cava. Contraindication for thrombolysis in active internal bleeding and recent history or stroke, neurosurgery, and major trauma. The term uh, pharmacomechanical thrombolysis refers to the procedure of combining the use of lytic infusion and for thrombolysis uh, with adjunctive castor based device to promote mechanical removal of the thrombus. One of our cases is a 14 years old female patient with acute iliofemoropopletial deep venous thrombosis at the left side of lower limb uh, with a thrombophilia screening test positive for uh, factor V Leiden and unthrombin 3 deficiency. The patient treated with uh, medical treatment, compression stoking, uh, and because of young age and the criteria of the DVT as a femoropopletial or uh, iliofemoral uh, lesion. Uh, the, uh, the patient uh, prepared for uh, thrombolytic therapy, castor directed thrombolysis main, and uh, pharmacomechanical. Uh, pharmacomechanical technique in this patient via popliteal vein axis, ultrasound guidance, and the micropuncture 21, uh, and using plasminogen activator RTPA with the sheath eat French.
This is the shape of uh, the machine console and um, uh, the catheter uh, for pharmacomechanical therapy. This video shows uh, the first angiogram for uh, uh, the case with thrombus load. And this is the passage of the catheter using uh, uh, RTPA and infusion of RTPA, about uh, 50 to 20 uh, milliliter of uh, RTPA uh, from iliac, uh, from um, uh, popliteal vein upward to uh, the IVC. Uh, waiting 20 minutes, uh, then uh, use a catheter for uh, thrombus removal. And this is uh, the, uh, the end of uh, uh, angiogram with the, uh, the dye passing freely to the IVC. So our take home message, uh, by the way, this patient followed up for uh, 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 48 uh, hours with duplex ultrasound and uh, uh, it was uh, partially compressible with uh, no uh, rethrombosis again and followed up for one year with anticoagulation and the patient uh, 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 it's very good. Uh, post thrombotic syndrome uh, re reduced uh, in the patient with uh, pharmacomechanical thrombolysis. Uh, pharmacomechanical thrombolysis would be an effective strategy for large thrombus burden in post arterial and venous pathology. Is to use time saving for large thrombus burden and relatively safe and low profile for uh, access site and uh, reduce the severity uh, of post thrombotic syndrome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for your interesting talk.